Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. Just because you're born again doesn't mean you automatically think right about everything. It doesn't mean that you're fully developed in the things of God. You're actually born, just like in the natural, a baby. And the scripture says in 1 Peter, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. You don't grow and develop spiritually just by passage of time. Uh, what I mean by that is there's people who were born again 50 years ago and they're still absolute babies, infants, spiritually. You don't just automatically grow by passage and reason of time. You must be fed. What did he say? Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And then Hebrews talks about growing up to the point where you're able to handle stronger food solid food, the meat of the Word, if you will. And so this, like we said, doesn't happen automatically. And just because you go to church doesn't mean you're getting something that's going to nourish your, your faith. You should. Hopefully you would. But um, there's a lot of churches you basically hear social reform. You hear politics. You hear people's experiences and things that are not the Word. They're not, uh, you know, God-anointed, God-utterance. But the Bible, thank God for the Bible, it is anointed, living, spirit food, faith food. And when it is read, preached, taught, spoken, heard under the anointing, it does things inside you that your head doesn't fully understand. It it nourishes your spirit. Like we said, my spirit is fed. It nourishes that, and a strong spirit affects every part of your being. It affects your brain and your mind. It affects your outlook, your perspective, everything. So get your Bible. Come on into the classroom. Get ready for a boost. <laughs> Father, all of us agree together as touching this, asking for that anointing to be manifested, the anointing that teaches us, reminds us, reveals, quickens us, leads us, guides us, heals us, delivers us. Your very real, wonderful presence manifested here with us. We ask for it. We thank you for it. We believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Look please again in 1 John 5th chapter. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, we've been for some weeks now in a series that we're calling uh, Faith That Overcomes. It's based on this verse here in 1 John 5, 4 that says, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, when we're talking about living by faith, walking by faith, overcoming by faith, we're not talking about religion. We're not talking about tradition. We're not talking about what group or set of mental tenets you ascribe to. We're talking about a living relationship, a living fellowship with the living God. And I know a lot of people didn't grow up in church at all. They, their parents didn't grow up in church. Their parents' parents didn't grow up in church. And then some other folks, they did, did grow up in church, but it was so dead. 
and so dry. It was just the traditions and ideas of men. And so that's why so many times people have said, well, I don't see any value in that. They quit going. And they don't see any value in praying because they don't think it ever worked for them or they got, ever got any results. And so, and then people go to sometimes unbelieving universities and, and listen to lies and decide there is no God and there is no heaven and hell and there is no life after death. Well, you're about to find out. Everybody's about to find out. And this is something you don't want to be wrong about. There's a lot of things you can be wrong about and it's not a big deal. But this, mm, oh dear friend, this, you, need to, you must get right. What do you mean? God is real, whether you think so or not. Genesis is correct. He created the heavens and the earth. He created our star. He created our galaxy. He created these things. And if you say, I don't buy, you can't prove he didn't. You weren't there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when people say, well, th there was a big bang and it, it just all came. So that's not science. That's a belief that all matter is self-generated. There's no science for that. That's a belief. And it's a wrong one. But there is a God. And, and without getting into your head and analyzing all these things, all you got to do is be honest about what you sense in your heart. Because if you'll, if you'll quit trying to be so proud and intellectual and check your heart, your heart knows there's a God. Your heart knows that the Father of Spirits is where you came from. You're a spirit. And deep calls to deep. You're the very essence of your being calls, cries out for its creator. Now you can suppress it, you can ignore it, you can edu educate your head and believe all kind of lies, but it's still going to be there. And the happy people are the ones that don't fight that. They're the ones that acknowledge it and the ones that choose to believe. Class, are you glad you've chosen to believe? Yes. If you haven't chosen to believe, now's your time. Right now. All you got to do, go to, go to Romans 10, 9 and 10. We've seen this over and over again. How do you get born of God? Well, he tells us in specifics. Romans 10, 9 and 10. He, prior to that, he was saying, you don't have to climb the highest mountain. You don't have to ascend to heaven. You don't have to go to the deepest depths. The, the word, the answer, the solution is close. It's as close as your heart and your mouth. What is it? If you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. I did that when I was a boy. I don't know when you did it, but when you did, you know it. It's real. It's not an imaginary thing. I want to lead you right now. If you've never done this, do it right now. Say this out loud with me uh, from your heart. Say it out loud. Father God, Father God I, believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus, I in your son, Jesus. that you sent him, you sent him. to the cross. And he paid the price for all my sins, every failure, every mistake. And you have raised him from the dead. He is alive right now. King of kings, Lord of lords, soon to come again. Jesus, I receive you as my Savior, as my Lord. And everything you have done for me, everything you have given me, I receive it by faith. Thank you for saving me. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. If you did that in faith, everything has changed. 
Your future has changed. Your destination has changed. All things are passed away. All things on the inside and of spirit have become new. And you are born of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A born overcomer. A victory looking for somewhere to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A victory. Glory to God. Look with me in uh, Numbers, if you would, again. Numbers chapter 14. That passage in Romans that we were reading, it talked about the, the gospel, the good report. And we've been seeing, by contrast, the evil report. Good report, evil report. Now, the word evil is the same word that's translated bad. And so it's the total contrast of good and bad. Good and evil, good and bad, same thing. And there's a good report, there's a bad report. The good report is the glad news of the good things. The bad report is the bad news of bad things. And what we saw is when uh, God delivered his people out of Egyptian slavery. He told them he had picked out a place for them. It's one thing to be delivered out of habits, out of sin, out of bondage, whatever. But once you're out of that, that's not the end. Where are you going? Right? Yeah. What's next? And... Uh, what is sad because there's a lot of people that have heard the good news and believed it and received and got saved and got delivered only to, in a matter of days, weeks, and months, just go back into the world because they didn't come on out and go into Canaan land. <laughs> what do you mean? You, you need to, uh, like, like the scripture said in Corinthians, Come out from among them and be separate and cleanse yourself, separate yourself from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. Well, all of that has to do with separation, separation. Uh, a friend of mine who's been a successful pastor, he and his wife for decades now, years ago as a young man, he was so heavy into drugs that he just destroyed his life and his health and damaged his brain. And he was in a bad, bad way. And somebody uh, gave him the gospel and one-on-one and, and led him to the Lord. And he not only got delivered from the drugs, hard, hard drugs, and, but God restored his brain and restored his health and brought him all the way out, and like I said, in a matter of two or three years, got him into ministry. And then, wonderful wife, and, and then a, started a church, and now, you know, uh, has served uh, uh, people and their kids and their grandkids. But uh, I asked him one time about that. I said, how did you, uh, how did you break free? Because he was really immersed in that life. Um, I won't go into the details, but... He, he said, well, one thing I saw, or he, he said, the thing that got to me to start with was the love of God. That's what got through to me because this man uh, ministered to him, I think, out on the street. And, and he could sense the love of God through the man for him who looked pitiful and was just such a mess. And he experienced the real love of God and came to the Lord, and then the man continued to love him and help him after he got saved. But he said he realized, I can't hang with my old druggy friends. I can't. That was all the friends he had was in that world. And of course, what do they do? When they get together, what do they do? What are they looking for? You know, all the time. And so... He, he said hi to somebody here and there, and next thing they're wanting to know, uh, where can we score, and, and what, you got any money on you, and all this kind of stuff. And, and so he realized, I, I can't be around this, or I won't stay free. 
he had to separate himself from all of his old acquaintances and old friends. And that's what many people won't do. They won't do that. And so the next thing you know, they're right back in it, back into the stuff they were delivered from, back into bondage, sometimes worse than before. No, God calls. He doesn't just call you out of sin and bondage and stuff. He's calling you to go somewhere better. Oh, come on. Can you say amen? He's calling you out of Egyptian slavery and bondage, not just so you could hang around uh, outside the city limits of Egypt. <laughs> Is that right? And look back inside, think about how it used to be and talk to Egyptians over the wall. And <laughs> no, he wants you out of there. He wants you completely separated. Hallelujah. And he's got a place. Now, now see, they didn't know where the place was or even what exactly it was when they left. And that's what faith is all about. You turn loose of what you know and by faith go into something better. Go into something bigger. Hallelujah. That's what all of us are doing in this life right now. We're headed for something better. Is that right? Better in this life, better, better, and then past this life, way better. Is that right? Say, somebody say, I'm headed for better. I'm headed. headed for better. But the way you get there is not just automatic or accidental. It's steps of faith. You got to take steps of faith. And this friend of mine told me that he said, uh, I knew I had to, I had to sever my, my contacts. I could not be hanging around there or them. And so he did. He, he, before long, he moved away. He moved out of the city. He got away. And next thing you know, he's uh, learning about God, learning about the Word and around some other good people. Next thing you know, he, he may meet somebody and they fall in love. And next thing you know, they're in Bible school. And, huh? Canaan land. Is that right? The land of freedom and the land of abundance, the land of the perfect will of God. So in, uh, in Numbers 14, let's look further at this. When the people just, uh, there was a point there where Caleb and Joshua were trying to get them to come back to the good report. When they heard about the walled cities and the giants, they just panicked. Fear just swept through the whole congregation. And, and Caleb immediately, he tries to calm them down and says, wait, 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 shh, shh, hush, hush, listen, listen. We can do this. God's with us. Now, we have a couple of phrases, but, uh, you know, perhaps there were other phrases they said. We just got the synopsis of it. But we know Coupled with what was in 14 here as well, they're saying, look what God has already done for us. I mean, he got us out of Egypt. Look what he did to Pharaoh's army, <laughs> right? He, he didn't take us this far to leave us now, right? That was never his plan because then the people were saying, yeah, this was God's idea all along. He just brought us out here to kill us. He just brought us out here to kill Deuteronomy says that. He hates us. They said, God hates us. Have you ever heard stupid stuff like that? I have. I've heard people say, well, I don't know what God ever did for me. He hates me. He don't, I don't, God doesn't like me. I don't blame him. I don't like myself. Would you quit? All you're doing is confusing yourself and opposing the one who can help you with everything. No, 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 no. Humble yourself and believe the love that he has for you. Believe that his plan for you was always a good plan. The gospel is glad tidings of the good things that God has for you. Come on, somebody said out loud, good things. God has good things planned for me. His plan for me is a good plan. No evil, good plan. Now, see, some people think that they have gotten smarter than that and that they, they will know, you know, sometimes God knows that evil in our life 
and against us and happening is actually cultivating our piety and you just never know and sometimes God uses this and that to teach you this and that. No, no, you have left the word. You've gotten away from the reality. There is an enemy. He, a thief, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Are you going to call God the thief? Are you going to say that the work of the devil is the will of God? Are you going to say that people's sin and disobedience and rebellion and unbelief is the will of God? He, that's what he wanted for them to do so that what happened would happen? You wind up hopelessly confused. And if God is working with the devil, we might as well quit now. Right? What, how, what you going to do with that? <laughs> You try to resist the devil, and he says, hey, God sent me. <laughs> no. The Bible said resist the devil, and if he tells you God sent him, he's lying. <laughs> Is that right? You resist him, say, no, you're a liar. Get out of here. I'm not receiving anything from you. And he has to flee. Notice with me in that 14th chapter again, chapter 14 and verse 24 the Lord, well, the Lord said in verse 23, he said, uh, Those people uh, will not see the land that I swore to their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it, but my servant Caleb, because he has another spirit, a different spirit from the spirit of fear. What was it? It was the spirit of faith. And we see what the spirit of faith is connected to. It says he has a, another spirit, a different spirit with him, and he has followed me fully. Now you'll find that phrase uh, more than once. He, he's followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Everybody say, he followed me fully. He followed me fully. Um, the NIV says it like this says, my servant Caleb has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly. There's two words there actually. One is to follow and the other is fully. I'm talking about original words. And so that's also translated wholly, completely, to follow completely. And it's about the heart. And, and you see, well, let me, let me read this to you from the others because it keeps repeating this. In Deuteronomy 1, it says it like this. Verse 34, uh, 35, the Lord had said, Not a man of this evil generation shall see the good land I swore to give your forefathers, except Caleb. This is the NIV. Except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, he will see it. I'll give him and his descendants the land he set his feet on because he followed the Lord wholeheartedly. What, what does that mean? The scripture said in the book of Acts that David, God said, David was a man after his own heart. And it goes on to say, which shall, he will do all my will. He will fulfill all my will. What does that mean? Well, well, David didn't know all the will of God when he started, but he had set his heart to do it. Can you see that? Yes. He had set his heart to go all the way with God. And why is that a deal? Well, you know, Revelation talks about uh, one of the churches, you know, he said, uh, you're not cold or hot. Uh, you're lukewarm. I wished you were cold or hot. Now see, that doesn't sound right to a lot of people because they, they think, well, you know, some degree is better than no degree. Right? I mean, you know, uh, isn't warm better than cold? <laughs> Maybe I'm not hot, but you know, I'm not frozen. Uh, well, the Lord, he said no. He said, I wish you were, I wish you were cold or hot. What does that mean? Well, you know, the prophet one time said, how long are you halting between two opinions? If Baal's God, we'll serve him. And if Jehovah's God, serve him. But what? Get off the fence. Make up your mind. <laughs> and you'll find this about God. He doesn't want you playing with it. Are you in? Are you out? Right? We're going to do this or we're not going to do it? You think, well, 
I don't know. I've been thinking about it. That means you won't make it. What do you mean? Because the Lord knows if you haven't made a quality decision, if you haven't given him your heart of commitment, then the enemy will be, a, be able to do enough to deceive and trick and confuse you, to wear you. If you haven't made up your mind before you start down a certain path with God, you're going to encounter resistance. And the first thing that happens when you encounter resistance or contradictions or temptations is, should I be doing this? Huh? Should I be here? Uh, you know, well, that means you, ha- you didn't make up your mind to start with, which means you will be easy to deceive and talk out of it. Why couldn't Caleb and Joshua be talked out of it? They had already made up their mind before they went into the land to spy it out. Come on, can you see that? Before they ever saw the land. And it wouldn't have mattered what they saw over there. God told them it's theirs and they believe it. But see, all these other folks, they, as long as everything was easy and happy, hallelujah, yeah, but, uh uh-oh, there's giants there? Ooh, I don't know. (laughs) Can you see? They had never really made up their mind. And when you haven't really made up your mind, you're going to encounter enough to knock you out, to talk you out of it. No, that's why you and I need to make a full, wholehearted commitment to our God, regardless of what we see, don't see, feel, don't feel. The Bible said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. All your strength. Why? Then the enemy doesn't have access to you. He can't talk you out of it. He can't deceive you and trick you. When you hit a bump in the road and even you wind up off the road and you go, that doesn't matter. We're going. I don't care what it takes. We ain't turning back. We already decided that. We're not in the process of deciding. We decided that before we started. We are going all the way. Somebody say all the way, all the way, all the way with God. And our time's up again. Said out loud, I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I am strong in faith, giving glory to God. Yes, you are. We'll see you again soon back here in Faith School. I've got the victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.